Today I'm reviewing a brand new 2023 Honda CRV. Now for this year, the CRV goes through a complete redesign and enters its sixth generation. With this generation, it utilizes a brand new platform shared with the new Civic and HRV, and it does grow significantly in size. Not only that, it's also stiffer, and of course you get a lot more features within. So how good is this brand new CRV? Let's find out. First, I want to give a big thanks to Honda of Lao, which made this video possible. So if you're in the market for a brand new or used Honda, make sure you check them out. Their URL is in the description below. So the first thing I want to talk about is the exterior looks to this brand new CRV. It's obvious that Honda spent a significant amount of time to try to make the CRV look more modern and edgy and overall more sporty. The front end definitely very different. You have a very long hood now, very high and long hood. You have a giant black, at least with this EXL, you have this giant black grill. You see that Honda emblem, of course, but you also have those very sleek looking headlights. I do like the way the new front end looks. Unfortunately though, there's no more fog lights. Now, if you look at the side and the rear, the overall profile still looks the same. The CRV does grow in length. The wheelbase grows about 1.6 inches. Overall length grows about four inches. It's about an inch wider. Height is about the same. But unless you have them side by side, you really can't tell. But I do think the refresh does make the CRV look more modern and more edgy and more in line with the rest of the cars out there. Now, as for the inside, it has also been updated. CRVs have always, always been enormous on the inside. Even the previous generation it had more second row legroom than even some of the midsize SUVs I've tested. And this one is no different. In fact, it got bigger. So in the second row, you can see I'm five feet 10 and still three to four inches of legroom that's behind my driving position. Plenty of headroom, like four, five inches of headroom. That's considered mid-sized territory. It's absolutely amazing how big it is it is in the second row. And if you look in the trunk space too, plenty big, very big. Unfortunately, no hidden storage underneath. You have your spare tire underneath, but you got plenty of space, a little bit of space on either side. One disappointing thing is, however, there's no levers to fold down the second row seat. So you do have to manually go in the second row and fold them down. Of course, once you fold down the seats, you get more cargo room. But another thing that I'm a little disappointed by is the fact that the second row seats, when folded, are not flat with the trunk. So you do see that little hump, probably like three inches. So it's not completely flat. And most cars these days, they figure out how to make that flat. So that is a little disappointing. But overall, in terms of cargo room, second row room, plenty of it. And even up front here, plenty of shoulder room. Look at how much headroom, plenty. Now, besides the enormous amount of space on the inside, the dash, the center console, everything else inside has been redesigned upgraded in the new civic it was the very first car to to introduce the kind of like the honeycomb grill for your vents that go from one side to the other it's still here this one the exl one does have a lot more black trim all around piano black trim that covers it but more or less it still kind of looks like the same shape you do have a giant infotainment screen on top as well so not bad not bad but it's very recognizable below is where it's a little bit different especially compared to say the hrv hrv is just a little bit smaller so below the dash area there's just not much room with the crv there is there's plenty of space underneath this exl does also get wireless charger which you see on the bottom you get two usb ports a 12v outlet and you get dual climate control too Overall, I think it's an upgrade versus the last generation. Now with the ZXL, one thing that I like is the fact that you still have a manual shifter. Unfortunately, every manufacturer have tried to reimagine it, make it better with push buttons or, or rotary dial or something. Even with the upper trims of Hondas, they do that too, is all these push 
buttons, right? I don't know, for me, call me old school, I still like that and that is still here. You also do get drive modes. That's not really special. You have normal, eco, and snow. This new CRV does get an upgrade version of all-wheel drive that's supposed to be better, supposed to be able to transfer the torque distribution front to rear and side to side better than the previous generation. Now, as for powertrain, you have two different options. They're both new, but very similar. The EX and the EXL both get a 1.5 liter turbocharged i4, and you're getting about 190 horsepower. Honda have tuned their CVT transmission so well, it just behaves like a like an automatic. There are two hybrids, and with the hybrid, you still have a turbocharged i4 with dual electric motors, and the output goes from 190 to 204. So you're not seeing a, a crazy jump, but you get a little bit. And overall, fuel economy does go up quite a bit. With the hybrid, you can expect 43 MPGs in the city, and 36 on the highway. So how about the drive? Well, I would say the drive is pretty good. It's, it's not like a luxury car, okay? It's not as smooth and as comfortable as a luxury car. But overall, I do feel like the CRV is quieter than the last generation. The last generation was good already, but this just feels quieter. The seats are also very comfortable. I, I love the seats from the, the old CRV, and it's the same. The design still looks very similar, so it would not surprise me if they're the same seats because uh, they look very, very similar, but they're very comfortable. And same thing with the second row, too. The second row, surprisingly, is very, very, very comfortable. With the EXL, you do get leather. That's what the L stands for. And also, you get other nice features like heated seats, memory seats, the sunroof, power tailgate, you know, all the essential stuff pretty well equipped. In addition to those features, you also get two large screens on the inside. The infotainment screen, now this is a nine inch touch screen and looks very similar to the last generation. I could tell it's been upgraded. It does look clearer and brighter. It's a little bit more responsive, but it's the same kind of button layout as before. The good thing is the volume knob is still here. So you don't have to worry about that. And also the CRV does get wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. So that's very nice. Now the gauge cluster also gets a half screen and I could tell this was pulled directly from a Honda Accord. And it, it works, but it's not the greatest digital screen out there. It's a little bit low resolution and not the clearest, uh, but it, it, it's an upgrade. So on the left side, the tachometer, you could change it to a variety of things to show your trip computer and your settings and maintenance and all that stuff. Also your safety systems appear, your miles per hour, some of the, the stuff that you wanna see is all within that screen. On the right side, you still have the speedometer. Now, the CRV does get a new steering wheel. It's been upgraded. I like it, it still feels pretty good, just like the old one, but just looks more modern. The buttons look a little bit better. You can control your media, your volume, your safety system, stuff like that, but it does feel pretty good. As for the steering itself, I do like it. I think it feels pretty good. The steering feels tight, has a good weight to it. There's not a lot of play in the steering wheel, let's put it that way. And overall, I think the steering is pretty good. Now the brakes also feel normal, more or less, <laughs> just like the old one. It's weird to comment on brakes because with some cars, the pedal is very twitchy, comes on too fast. Some cars too mushy, right? With this CRV, it's just right. Honda did a really good job with it. Now, are there any downsides to this new CRV? Yes, and I've mentioned some already. In the trunk space, a little annoying, you can't fold down the second row seats without levers on the sides. Also, I would have preferred to see the second row seats fold flat and not have that hump. In the second row, for passengers, unfortunately, no USB ports. What's up with that? How much can it cost to just throw at least one USB port back there? None with this EXL. The last thing relates to pricing, and that is the LX trim, the more affordable trim is gone. So now the base trim is the EX. 
which of course is a little bit higher. Now, as for Honda Sensing, it also has been upgraded with the CRV. You get the latest Honda Sensing, which means everything that you're looking for, you get, including emergency braking, forward collision warning, blind spot monitoring, intelligent cruise control, which has been upgraded, and the CRV could also read the speed limit sign, tell you if you're paying attention to the road, you get the whole suite. Now, as for pricing, the new CRV has four different trim levels. Two are hybrids, two are non-hybrids. The base is now the EX. Unfortunately, LX is gone. The EX is the base, and it starts around $32,000 after destination charge. Then you have the Sport Hybrid, starts around $34,000, a little bit under. Then you have the one I'm driving today, which is the EXL. The EXL is right around $35,000. Then you have the range topping sport touring hybrid, which comes in right under $40,000. So am I a fan of the CRV? Yes, I think this is a good redesign. The best parts of the CRV is still here. It's still very spacious. It drives well. It's quieter than before. You have more features. And this is just really practical and usable for families. So yes. I am a fan of the CRV, and there's very little for me to nitpick on. So, smash up the like, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for my future videos. Take care. Bye bye.